Welcome to EWA's FinLit Podcast. EWA is a fee-only RAA based out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We hope all listeners of this podcast will benefit as we deep dive into uh, complex financial topics that we will make simplified for you. And we hope that this really serves as a catalyst so that you can make the best financial planning decisions uh, for your family and also save time. Today's episode, Ben and I are going to take a, uh, a dive into an annuity, in, into what annuities are, when they make sense for a financial plan. We did one podcast uh, earlier on the good the pros and cons of annuities, and we're going to focus more on use cases and when we um, when we see a time and place for, for them to be implemented in a financial plan. So Ben, why don't you give us, just refresh everybody, general overview, what is an annuity? Yeah, I think of an annuity as kind of the opposite of life insurance. I think that's the simplest way that I can explain a lot of annuities are complicated. There's a lot of different types of annuities on the market that you could have in your financial plan. But just from a super high level overview, think of life insurance as you pay the life insurance company a little bit, a little bit, a little bit over time. And then when you die, you get a big check. Think of the annuity as the exact opposite. You give the insurance company a big check. And then over time, you get a little bit, a little bit, a little bit back in the form of either a monthly payment or an annual payment, depending on the type of annuity. So life insurance, it protects you if you die too quickly. So that is protection if you die. Annuity is the exact opposite. It protects you if you live too long. In theory, it's going to guarantee you some sort of income stream for the rest of your life. Um, And so that's kind of how that would work in, in practice. There's a lot of different types. Again, like you mentioned, you did a podcast with Matt, more so talking about some of the different types, the positives, the negatives. We're going to focus today's podcast primarily on a couple cases of an annuity, when it might make sense in your financial plan and, and, and why, why why that works. Awesome. So basically, there's two different main, there's a lot of different types of annuities, but break them down to two categories, fixed annuity, variable annuity. So what's a fixed annuity? Fixed annuity, putting a lump sum in, and then you get basically a fixed percentage back from the insurance company year over year, depending on what that what that stated rate would be. A variable annuity is a little bit more um, market-based, so it's maybe invested in like a sub-account that the insurance company would be managing that would more so track a return, more so related to the stock market, whereas a fixed annuity would be a fixed guaranteed rate. So different types of fixed annuity, we'll just hit on these briefly, um, SPIA, SPIA, What's that stand for? You know? Single premium immediate annuity. So basically you put a lump sum in to the insurance company and then right away start getting payments. Payment Whereas a deferred immediate annuity, uh, a, a deferred income annuity, excuse me, put money in and then you set a date in the future, maybe five years, 10 years down the road, you say, hey, this is when I'm going to start receiving payments. And so in that five, 10 year window, whatever the number is, that money starts accruing interest based on whatever the fixed rate that you locked in at the time of purchase. And then you start getting money back at whatever rate at whatever time that you have, you have set. So let's use an example. Let's say you're 65 years old, you're about to retire and you take, um, $300,000, you put it into an immediate annuity and it starts paying you out some sort of income stream. So there's no deferral period, so it's not going to grow. It's just, you put it in, immediately starts paying. A couple of variables, decisions that you'd have to make. Um, number one, are you going to add like a period certain? So a lot of times it'd be a 20-year guaranteed period certain. So if you're living for 20 years, beyond 20 years, it's going to pay out. If you die before 20 years, somebody's getting that benefit for guarantee of 20 years. So if you die at year 10, whoever the beneficiary is gets it you know, for the full 20 years. And so, so that's important. So if you put money in the first day and you die a day later, insurance company guarantees that your spouse or whoever you put as the beneficiary receives annuity payments for that full 20 years. If if you have a 20-year period, certain not right. all annuities have that. And then there's different types of, um, you can take it for single life, so it's just on one person, a joint life. There's a, there's a bunch of different ways to, to claim these, but you could get a higher payout just on your life. Maybe there's a period certain. You could do a joint life where you're taking a lower payout, but it's going to pay out if one spouse dies, the other spouse gets it their whole lifetime. Um, those would probably be the two main 
main one main options but the deferral then the the deferred income annuity let's say you put the 300,000 in and you're gonna, and you're going to claim it and you start taking pay, payouts in 5 years so those 5 year that 5 year period of deferral again this is not market based it's going to be some sort of interest rate um, growth and a lot of times if depending on the, the annuity company they're going to pay out some sort of interest rate based on how the company performs similar to like a, a life insurance contract um, and that could be a reasonable alternative for a bond investment so you know there if a high there's high interest rates in envi- high interest rate environment could be a um, more favorable interest rate than than a fixed income instrument but super there's a lot of variables you know what interest rates are what's going on with with the economy, client situation, et cetera. But um, anything else on a just general overview of how fixed annuity works? Yeah, just and, and we'll get into this a little bit more, but when do you think this makes sense for someone's plan or for someone's overall financial plan? What, what age should someone be thinking about a fixed annuity? What net worth, what characteristics do they, do they want from this? Yeah, um, very few. I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever actually recommended and implemented one. Um, I would say... One use case would be if if we do have a really conservative client that just like doesn't want to, I guess gets more for peace of mind. So if they if it stresses them out to see market fluctuations, um, one strategy is we would always want we could want fifty percent at least of their um, income needs coming from something guaranteed. So let's just say somebody's spending two hundred thousand a year. Um, it's their basic needs for retirement, social security, two spouses, let's say it's paying them 75 a year. Um, they don't have a pension. And so we, maybe we say, okay, let's get some sort of an annuity product that's going to pay 25,000 a year to bridge the gap and have them have a hundred thousand of guaranteed income, which would be 50% of their 200,000 need could go above that. But, um, a lot of times, all times we could just make up the difference from, from investment returns or some sort of distribution strategy. Um, but I would say that's really the only, only real use case. Maybe if like there was a weird interest rate environment where you could someone's getting ready to retire and you can get a very high interest rate on on an annuity, locking in a higher rate when knowing interest rates are going to drop. Again, I've never actually like recommended or implemented that because a lot of times we can just replicate the exact same thing with investment returns. Yeah, and generally lower cost too yeah. from what an annuity would a yeah. fixed annuity would would offer right yeah well let's dive into um what's a qlac so a qlac that stands for qualified longevity annuity contract um and this is something that has been adjusted with the secure act 2.0 that was just passed uh i believe two years ago now um so let's just break down qlac as an acronym what that means so q qualified that means that the annuity has met the requirements set by the government for preferential tax treatment. So tax deferral on any sort of QLAC that is qualified. Longevity, again, this goes back to the annuity portion. Make sure that you're not outliving your money. So essentially what a a QLAC is, is it is an annuity contract that is purchased with money that is sitting in a retirement account. So if you have an old 401k that maybe you rolled into a traditional IRA you're able to put up to two hundred thousand dollars into a QLAC, and the and why you would do this or why this might make sense is that any money that goes into a QLAC, you defer any required minimum distributions that you have to start taking at age seventy three, up until your age eighty five. So you have that twelve year window where you're deferring RMDs, you're pushing those back, and then once you hit eighty five. Any of the money that's sitting in the QLAC becomes a single life annuity. So, like we mentioned, that becomes a fixed payment that you start receiving from 85 throughout the rest of your life. Um, cannot be purchased with assets from a Roth IRA or an inherited IRA. But if you have like an old pre tax balance and you're concerned about what your RMD requirement would be, this is something that, that could make sense. We'll get into a, a real life example soon. But Qualified, it's it's um, tax deferred, longevity. You're putting payments off until age 85, and it's an annuity contract, so you're guaranteeing a stream of income, regular payments, really for the rest of your life. Basically, deferring RMDs on a portion of your IRA balance exactly. until 85. Exactly. Um, case study in this: Let's say you have a 73 year old that is now subject to RMDs with their IRA balance. Let's say there's they have 400 thousand dollars in their IRA. 
their RMD from that $400,000 balance will be somewhere around $15,000 that they have to take out. So if they decide, hey, I'm going to put 200000 of my $400,000 IRA into a QLAC, then their RMD amount that they'd be subject to when they're 73 is now 7500 instead of the 15000 So they basically cut their RMD in half, lower their income tax on the RMD that they have to take, and then plus they defer tax on the other 200000 that's now in the QLAC until, until they're age 85. So um, again, would, does this make sense? Totally case by case basis. Um, I would say the big downside of this, or maybe why we wouldn't recommend doing this, is that a lot, a lot of times the same returns or more can be gained in a traditional portfolio, again, without the expenses of the QLAC or without the expenses of the annuity. But this is a good way for people that, um, it's a good way almost to, to almost force people in a good way to leave money in their IRAs because people generally feel good about spending their RMDs and not taking distributions from from their IRA. Yeah, again, not I've never recommended implemented this, but it's out there, so important to be educated on it. Um, could be used to defer some RMDs. But let's get into variable annuities. Um, yeah, Ben, why don't you just give us an overview of what a variable annuity is? Yeah, so a variable annuity, a lot of the same characteristics of a fixed annuity that we talked about, but instead of a guaranteed rate that the insurance company is going to guarantee over the life of the annuity. A variable annuity means that um, their actual investments are in a sub account. So it's more so tied to equities than a fixed rate. So your actual payment is not guaranteed. It could go up or down depending on the performance of, of the sub accounts. Um, Again, there's a lot of fees, a lot of expenses. This is something that we're not generally recommending for our clients. Yeah, basically it's putting money into an annuity contract that's growing with the market instead of the fixed amount, and then you have the option to turn it on um, as an income stream down the road. These are, in my opinion, grossly oversold, made out to be way better than they are. They're very expensive. You're usually you're invested in um, funds that are like proprietary to the insurance company and the annuity contract. So it's not like you're just in a standard like ETF index fund. You'll, you'll be in like a insurance company's like variable annuity fund. Um, so a lot of times expensive, there's just not very many use cases for these. A lot of times when we come across a variable annuity, we're trying to figure out how to, how do we efficiently get out of this thing without, you know, staying in for a million reasons. But, yeah. um, yeah, no, I would say zero use case for for variable annuity. Yeah, May, uh, maybe actually one. I'll give one. If we I, we have done this. If there is a if somebody wants to surrender a life insurance contract, and the cash value is lower than the basis, you can do a ten thirty five into a variable annuity invested in the market, and then once once the um, once the amount reaches the basis, then you surrender it because if you surrender it immediately. And put it into investment account. The difference between what whatever the bit the amount the basis of the life insurance is taxable versus if it goes into the variable annuity, you can save on taxes up to that basis. Amount. Gotcha. Um, so that's really the only only use case I've seen. And that's a tax free exchange, the ten thirty five. So that's a tax free penalty free exchange from the life insurance contract into the variable annuity, getting the basis back up to neutral, and you're avoiding yep. tax on whatever that growth would be, as opposed to an investment account, you could be subject to capital gains. So yeah, that 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 case could make sense, but I would say generally speaking, variable annuities, index annuities um, are not something that are part of our recommended financial plans. Yeah, and a couple other use cases. So um, some annuities, if they're a, a Medicaid qualified annuity, they could help with Medicaid spend down protection. So basically if you took money, put it into an annuity, and then needed to go into an assisted living facility, they can't medic. They can't come take the the principal of the annuity as long as long as you're taking out the required amount every year. Um, that could be protected from Medicaid if you're in a qualified annuity that, that is Medicaid qualified. So that one use case, and I thought this was interesting. There was a Wharton study um, that basically said it, it, it looked at using annuities for an income stream in retirement and said that higher paid and higher educated retirees are have a 
it's much easier for them to spend down their retirement assets and lower paid, less educated retirees have a harder time spending down retirement assets. So what that means for annuities is like, could be a situation, again, probably wouldn't recommend this, but could be if somebody, if it gives them peace of mind to have that guaranteed income stream because they have a hard time spending down their retirement assets, maybe could implement an, an annuity. Um, but most people, if they're, you know, well-educated on, on the retirement situation, they'll understand that, you know, there's efficient ways to spend down your retirement assets. Gotcha. Yeah. makes complete sense. I would say if you're thinking about an annuity, I would consult with a financial or tax professional to see if it makes sense in your financial plan. Yeah, totally agree. Um, if you have a, an annuity, you want analyzed, feel free to, to reach out or if you're considering it, but most cases, you know, not, not a practical, practical tool for most financial plans. Yeah. If you have any questions about any annuity that's in your financial plan or your financial plan in general, feel free to reach out to a trusted tax or financial advisor and we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks for tuning in to uh, our podcast. Hopefully you found this helpful. Really hope this is as beneficial and impactful to as many people uh, across the nation as possible. So hit the follow button, uh, make sure to rate the podcast and please share, uh, with any friends or family members that would also find this beneficial. Thank you very much.